This video will review how to get started using iRender Next, including how to install the software, how to open iRender Next, render a simple exterior scene, render a simple interior scene, add reflections, add lights, and review the final results. Hey everyone, my name is Dennis, and I'm going to show you how to get started using iRender Next. So the first thing you should have done already is have gone to renderplus.com and downloaded the latest version of iRender Next. Next you will need to install the software and that's where I'm going to get started today. So over here is the zip file that I downloaded. If you just double click on it and then again double click on this over here where it says click here to install. Then shortly after that a install wizard should pop up and just follow along with that. Then once that's done you can go ahead and open up SketchUp. And by the way, iRender Next only works on a Windows computer, and it will work with all versions of SketchUp 6 and 7. Alright, well to open iRender, find the Plugins menu up here. If you don't see the Plugins menu, try shutting down SketchUp and reinstalling iRender. Well, my Plugins menu is here, so we can go ahead and click on it. And then come down here to iRender Next. Click on that. And then up pops this toolbar here. This toolbar is where you will find anything and everything having to do with iRender. Right now you don't need to worry about all those buttons. There are other videos and documentations on all the features of iRender Next on our website. For now I'm just going to show you the basics of doing a quick rendering with some of the basic settings and features. Alright, well this is the house we're going to deal with today. And I will load this up to our 3D Warehouse account um, if you want to download it and use it yourself. Also, it'll be on the iRender Next Getting Started page so you can go there to find it too. Alright, so before we start rendering, I want to review a few of the most important things you should do and know before you render. For this simple example, we're just going to use this button here, but also real quick, this button next to it is where many more setting options can be found if you need it. Alright, so just go ahead and click on the green button, and then up pops this new dialog. This box is where all of the basic and also the most important features you will need to set up your rendering. Firstly, we have all these presets here and they're here to help you set up the different types of scenes you may be rendering. This is pretty self-explanatory, but they're also very important. For now, I'm going to stick with high dynamic because it casts very even and soft light. Of course, exterior would also be a good choice in this situation. And then just below that is where you can set up the rendered image size. You can choose from one of these options here, or you can enter your own custom size here. And over here is where you can set the length of a rendering. I always like to put my time at 0 seconds and put my passes at at least 20, but the more passes the better. You can always come back and change it later if you need more time for better results. Alright, well let's render this and see what we get. And you can do that by coming down here and clicking on Start Rendering. Okay, now the geometry is being extracted. And this will take some time depending on the size of your model. And sometimes it may look like the software has frozen up or the screen will turn white. But don't worry, it should still be working, so just give it some time. Then once extraction is done, the rendering will start and you can sit here and watch it work. Once you're happy with the results, you can come up here and click on the save button and that will save the rendered image to your hard drive. Okay, and here it is. Pretty good, right? Note the soft shadows and the even highlighting in this rendering. Alright, now let's move to the inside. Okay, I want to do a quick rendering, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this green button again. But this time choose Interior with Sun. And then click Render. And here are the results. It's pretty good, but I think we can improve it. Let me show you how. First, let's add some reflection to the floor and the tabletop and the vases on the table. I rendered Next's material settings are based on material name, so all objects with the same material name will have the same material settings applied to them. So adjusting the material on one object will affect all other objects with the same material applied to it. So to adjust a material setting, simply hover over the material you want to edit, right click, and go up to Edit Material. You will even see the name of the material next to it just so that you can make doubly sure that you've picked the right material. And then up pops this simplified material editor box, and this is where you can add reflection. If you want more options, you're going to need to click on this more button down here. So we have these presets over here for you that will work great in almost any situation. But there's also this slider bar and this input box. 
that you can use if you want to fine tune the setting. So for this tabletop, I think I'll pick reflective and then click OK. Now the same thing goes for the floor. Hover over it, right click, click on edit material, choose reflective, and press OK. Now once more for these vases here. Hover over, right click, edit material, and this time I'm going to choose metal and click OK. Alright, so now I want to add some lights. I render next has a light library built into it. To access that, come up to the toolbar and click on create a light fixture button. So first I want to place a table lamp. So I can just come up here to the table tab and this is where I can design the look of the lamp. So I'm going to choose this shade and I'm going to stick with this base but I want to change the base color to black and click OK. Now I want to change some of these dimensions over here so I'm just going to do this make this a little bit smaller, make this smaller. Then once that's done I can go ahead and click on create lamp and move it where I want it and click once to place it. Alright next I want to add some ceiling lights so let me first change my angle of viewing here and then I can come back and click on the create light fixture button again but this time click on the ceiling tab I'm going to stick with a rectangle light here, but I'm going to change my dimensions a little bit. And then go ahead and click on Create Lamp. And again, just move to where I want to place it. Click once. And then I can move over here, put it where I want it, and click once to place it. All right, let's move back to the other view. And now we're ready to render. So again, just click on the green button, and I'll show you the results. And here it is. Much better, right? You can see the light coming in through the windows and reflecting off the floor and the tabletop and as well as the vases here. Also you can see the ceiling lights and the lamp working. Alright, well that's about it. You should now be able to use iRender Next. Please check out our website at renderplus.com for more helpful videos, documentation, and forums. Also check out the Getting Started page. It'll take you through all these steps of this video again so you can try it out for yourself using this model or one of your own. Alright, thanks guys.